Yeah, they're all hiding behind one guy's shield. They're playing salsa, walking around yeah. on the road, dancing. What are you doing? Yeah, see the guy across the way yeah. in the top left corner? Yep. He's hiding behind the shield. I feel like if they just dumped the shields, then they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. we, this is We normal. know what to do. Yeah. yeah. Wait, stop right there. What did she say? She said you can't shield in front of another shield. <laughs> <laughs> she said that like she read the doctrine that morning. <laughs> I'm gonna start dry heaving after watching this video. Hey guys, what's going on? Mike Austin here at Philcraft Studio. Um, reviewing another video. This one, an officer involved shooting. These are things that we're gonna be doing every single week because we wanna give you the input versus the impact of just watching a video without understanding or context and just our experience. Um, again, preparedness is about the idea and a conversation of talking about things that we could have done better. Uh, I train law enforcement officers across the United States, so does Phil Craft Survival, but we also train civilians. So making the correlation and an officer involved shooting uh, of what you could do better as a civilian potentially if you're put in the same circumstance. So here we go, let's kick it off. Um, All right, go pause it right there. So, look, there's a lot of things that I immediately identify that I use to identify people on flat ranges when I'm training them, um, how exposed or conditioned they are to stress. And we, we talk about this all the time, right? Yeah. Condition oh, yeah. responses. And one of those metrics that I use is um, movement or, or sporadic movement in this case. Sporadic, yeah. A standard operating procedure is meant to make the physical movement component more efficient, which will give you the benefit of time. So one of the things that right off, right off the uh, bat that I can identify is these guys are not specifically trained in dealing with this exact tactic. And when the video kicked off, you had a guy who's, who yelled, he's aiming, he's aiming. So which tells me the first shooter either did not identify that he's aiming. And then the second shooter, who's this, the guy in the back, who's telling the first guy that he's aiming, it must have not taken it seriously because he didn't yeah. shoot. I mean, if you tell me a guy's, if I'm, the, if I'm the first dude in the stack and I have my gun in the fight because I have a shield and I have a pistol in front of me, and you tell me the guy's aiming and you have a different angle on him, I'm breaking shots. Yeah, 100%. Right? Well, and I, I don't know. I mean, I've never been the guy with the shield, but to me, the guy in the front is the guy that is should be observing and paying attention to, to the shield. everything yeah. that's going on. Yeah. He's the guy that should be relaying to everyone else what's going on, not the other way around. So I don't it, – it's hard because the camera's down, but you can't really see what he's doing. But, I, I mean, like you said, you see these guys kind of sporadically moving. They're – acting obviously very nervous and they're not exempt from being nervous but it just tells me that maybe the training standard mm. isn't probably where it should be with this yeah the the guys have a shield and what you should understand about a shield is it's good for barricaded suspects in a static position because um, when you're static with a shield you could run a piece of kevlar that's going to protect you from uh you know it's going to provide the adequate cover but you're still exposed. Um, they were behind an A-pillar of a vehicle and decided as an element to move in the open. Now, the guys, I I'm assuming here, and we'll find out in a second, that one of the guys has a shield. Uh, or Do you know if both of these guys? I, I think there was another guy with tan pants a second ago, and I, it looked like the way he was postured, he was holding a shield too. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know who this other guy is here on the right. Um, I don't think he does. So I'm a big fan of shields. I, 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 li I like shields. We use them in special operations, especially with um, dealing with uh, suicide vests or bombs that potentially were going to go off. So we had some adequate protection from shrapnel. And, and they're good as a tactic. But the problem with a element running a shield is everybody has to stack behind them because none of those guys have cover. But then you start falling in love with that one piece of cover. 
when you're exposed in the open and you have a gun in between your eyes where you identify the bad guy in your exposed body and the bad guy, the advantage you have is you have a gun in the fight. So what I'm seeing here is a lot of guys uh, moving and they're like, I need to get behind this shield. You got a gun. So if you're the guy, like the guy right now who's the third guy who has a gun, but the gun's not in the fight, you're taking the gun out of the fight and and uh, waving the shield, uh, weighing the shield over the gun in the fight. Right. Like, no, you have a pistol. If, if, if you had a carbine, you would want to get that carbine off. If you have a pistol, you want to get that uh, pistol off and get another gun introduced in the fight. So you have ballistic protection and reacting to a threat. Now you have one guy who's holding a shield with one hand, holding a pistol with one hand, and how accurate is he going to be? Look, law enforcement is, is not trained enough. I know special operations units and guys who focus on this specific skill set as their sole jo- job, and they dedicate a lot of time to that. I, I'm already getting the picture right now, that, to, to, to be quite honest, that these guys have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, well, and just from being a first responder, being around these types of things, when you see folks that are indecisive, that scares me. Yeah. When, I, when you are the guy that's supposed to be showing up to control the chaos and you're indecisive, that doesn't instill confidence in everyone else that's involved in that. Yeah, scene. there's a tactic here, right? There's a standard operating procedure that they should be identifying, that they enact. It looks efficient. It's very deliberate. Here, it looks like chaos because they don't have a plan. Yeah. They don't have a tactic. They're, they're winging it, and that's why you get even the, the footwork. I look at eyes and physical behavior as uh, things that identify a person's like neurological status. If a person's moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and, and inconsistent in that movement, it's because they don't have a thing that they're supposed to use as a tactic. So let's keep rolling. Yeah, they're all hiding behind one guy's shield. That's, that's the problem. And, and, and as this continues to roll, another problem I have is what I teach. When you're in a gunfight, the gun should not be oriented at the ground. It shouldn't be oriented up in the air. These guys are trying to strike a balance between hiding behind a shield and staying engaged in the fight. How would they act if there wasn't a shield at all? Right. They'd be online getting those guns in the fight. But instead, they're all acting erratic, trying to hide behind a piece of cover that they all have on their chest. Put the gun in between your eyes and the target. Understand that you have body armor. The advantage is to get exposed to the threat so you can identify what the threat's doing and be proactive in that. That's why you would close the distance in this case. Instead, they're playing salsa, walking around on the road, dancing. Well, I mean, you just think about a pace plan, right? Like, what's your primary course of action? What's your alternate? Like, what are you going to do if this happens? And I'm not seeing any indication that there was any of that thought through. They're just kind of winging it, walking around. Yeah. I mean, there's vehicles everywhere, which, no, it's not the best cover, but yeah. it's still better than It's better than open. dancing linearly yeah. in a ranger file yeah. behind a piece of shield. All right, keep it rolling. Yeah, he's flagging the crap out of his buddy. Yeah. I'm not a flag Nazi in real circumstances with people who know what they're doing, but I could tell these guys lot training, which most law enforcement officers do. Yeah. Um, like, like even the, he's, moving, he's advancing towards the, the uh, thing, backing up, advancing, backing up, yeah. which is building, like, pause it real quick. Like, he's flagging the dude's, like, the back of his leg where he could blow out his femoral artery, that dude would be fighting for his life on the X if he, if, he was, if he was nervous. He's fidgeting with the gun. The shield guy's moving forward, moving back, moving forward. If you, if you know anything about CQB, the number one man is never wrong, but he also dictates the train and how efficient and effective uh, and, and how confident those number two and number three right. guys are going to move. If this guy ro- rolls up, solidifies and anchors a position, that gives those guys the confidence that, hey, this dude knows what the hell he's doing. Right. But now we're moving forward, we're moving back, we're moving forward. Like, what are you doing? What is your SOP? And, and I guarantee you, 
If you ask these three guys what their SOP is for shields and barricaded suspects, you get three different answers. Yeah. Yep. Well, and I, I'm guessing that the, these guys are all feeding off of probably other groups of people who are doing the same thing. There's probably yeah. two or three shields moving towards the subject all at the same time. And they're trying to like look at each other and figure out what's going on. And instead of like one guy taking charge or having an earpiece and saying what's going on exactly. and saying, Hey, here's what we're doing. Everybody move forward. Everybody stop, whatever it is. When you can d like, put a leader in charge and someone can make a call, you're going to set everyone else up for success. Even if you're going into an unknown circumstance, like I don't yeah. know what to do yeah. in the absence of orders, you make shit happen. Yeah. And it's also too, and that's a great point because in the absence of training, that's why we do infantry tactics and we use small unit leaders because subordinates don't get as much time. And so when you have, uh, for example, in this circumstance, guys who are patrol officers who are now turning into special response officers right. and they have to change their tactics in something they don't normally do, you get that one good cell leader. Uh, instead of screaming, I, he's still moving, I think he's moving. Like one guy to say to the other guys, calm down, mm -hmm. give me a status, what do you see? It gets them uber focused and also builds the confidence that they're going to do the right things. And, and again, you, you see chaos, and I'm waiting for the chaos to kind of take grasp and somebody to gain control, but it hasn't happened yet. Let's keep it rolling. So it sounds like this lady's trying to take charge, whoever she is. Yeah, see the guy across the way yeah. in the top left corner? Yep. He's hiding behind the shield. Like, come on, dude. Ducked down, squatted behind Like, you have one dude, I'm assuming this is one guy, a barricaded suspect in a vehicle, and all of their tactics are flying out the window right now. And they're acting like they don't know what to do. Yeah. It's a U.S. Marshal. Like, it, I feel like if they just dump the shields, then they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. we, this is We normal. know what to do, yeah. yeah. You can't shield Wait, stop right there. What did she say? She said, you can't shield in front of another shield. <laughs> <laughs> and she said that like, like confidently. Like, she said that like she read the doctrine that morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't shield in front of another shield. It's like, yeah, but we're shielding. Yeah. No, you can't shield in front of another. Shield. Yeah, but we're shielding. We're actually doing that right now. Yeah, but, but you, you can't, can't do, do it. that. It's not allowed. <laughs> um, so, so let's just clarify. You can shield behind another shield. That's, that's allowed. I'm assuming what she means is you got two tactical elements stacked behind each other. Nobody knows what the hell they're doing. You got fed, and this, by the way, this is uh, something we often see in joint task force of organizations who have egos where they never work together because of mm -hmm. those egos. Mm -hmm. And then they have to work together on the X or during a crisis. And then you get this, you get the guy in the cool beard who's holding the pistol down at the ground at the dirt. Uh, you get a shield guy going, what the hell are we doing? Who might be squared away. And then you get a, uh, who you can hear in the background, a female officer who sounds like a sergeant or a supervisor who's on scene just yelling at everybody. Yeah. Well, and what I just saw too is she's not behind any shields. She's just trying to point and direct and she's just in the open. That's great. That's, that's what you need right there. That's Let's perfect. see how that rolls out. Back towards everything that's going on. Pushing a shield out of the fight. This would frustrate me so much. If I was a supervisor, I'd tell everybody to go get in their patrol cars. Yeah. Like get in your cars, just give give me a give me a car beam. Oh my god. Oh wow, she doesn't have a gun at, gun at all. She's standing in the open. She's overweight. And and look, I pause it real quick. Like here here here's what I'm not afraid of doing, because I I do this for a living. I'm not afraid to call cops out for being overweight. If you're a fat cop, you need to get your butt in shape and get in the gym and start eating right. There's plenty of resources for it. I could point you in the right direction. What she's not doing right is she's out in the open without a gun, yelling at people, directing people. Now the call to pull that organization back might be the right one, right. tactically, right? right. Um, but the way that she's going about it, uh, she's breaking and violating all the rules of patrolling and security. tactics, yeah. where well, she's violating the principle of security, right? Um, bum bummer, because it could have been yeah. gone down right. Here's what I know what's happening, that she's not in potentially. Um, she's not in fight or flight. No. She's very parasympathetic. Uh, I don't know if that's because she doesn't care, 
Um, or she's so frustrated out of her cops being so elevated yeah. for after being involved in a shooting. Yeah. Chicago police officers, I'm assuming it's Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Chicago police officers, the veterans of the Chicago Police Department, or have seen some stuff, right? Oh, right? for sure. They're 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 OG war vets. I mean, <laughs> uh, but uh, obviously some bad tactics here, um, and I could beat these cops up, and I'm not afraid to do it. But um, let's see how how does this end? Yeah. She just ro stomps off. Yeah, she's just rolling off, back towards everything. I'm gonna start dry heaving after watching this video. Um, well, and it's just bad leadership too. And in, I mean, you don't. When people are already elevated, if you're the leader, your job is to bring your people back to like out of the red zone and into a, a place where they can think yeah. and act and do their job. Because they they're already trained. They should already at least know how to do their job. Mm -hmm. My job isn't to tell them how to do their job. My job is to control the environment so they can do their job. Yeah, yeah. Do their let them do their job get through the tactical scenario and let's talk about all the doctrinal things you did wrong after the fact exactly right yeah. hey I, I, like uh, i'm not afraid to beat up cops i'm not afraid to do that and tell them how it is tactically if i see tactics that don't make sense to me based on decades of experience i'm going to tell you guys that uh, as we transition from an understanding of how this relates to you guys as civilians or citizens it's stress affects you you could be a tactical gunfighter on a flat range, notching X's, uh, hitting the bullseye, doing whatever you do, real sexy like. But when you're immersed in stress, where you're literally shooting at other human beings who are trying to kill you, it changes things. So you see things fall apart and degrade. More specifically, you see things even more degrade when people from different experiences come together and you have a lack of leadership, yeah. right? Oof. Different levels of stress, different experiences, different conditions, and then you see chaos like this. Uh, I'm, imagine, uh, do you have the scenario of actually what happened? Imagine the suspect didn't make it. Uh, he was barricading his vehicle um, oh, and it didn't, it didn't end well for him. If you have the uh, understanding of what took place, or even if you're a Chicago police officer or Chicago resident who knows more about this, leave it in the feedback in the comments. Look, hey, if, if uh, you hit your little bell in the subscription, you guys could get the notifications for this. I want your feedback. I, I like, you know, leaving feedback is fun. It's good for engagement. But if you have videos that you want us to, to start looking at, please go ahead and dump those off uh, below. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell your friends. We will be doing these every week. Um, I think it's some, something that we've realized um, in the time space continuum that we have, it's something that we should be doing anyway. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. taking a real world circumstance because in training, you do this a lot. You talk about, we create a scenario to talk mm -hmm. about in reference and context, but when you can actually take a video, break it down and analyze it for folks, like it gives you a real world scenario for context and whatever yeah. your training is. We started doing it on our Instagram as well at Philcraft survival. Make sure you go to Philcraft Peace out. Later guys.